102.2 Auckland. It is I on the world with uh, scoop.co.nz Salwan Manning joining us. Uh, hello to you, Salwan. Yeah, good morning, Glenn. Now, for the past few weeks on Eye on the World, we've concentrated on um, the uprisings in Libya, um, also Egypt. Uh, but these uprisings and the um, and the distress in the Middle East seems to be moving eastward, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, certainly, what we're seeing, you know, I'm looking at the whole picture today. You know, if we're looking at, you know, the the uprisings, the flare-ups in um, Egypt, Bahrain, um, Tunisia. Uh, they're all coming back to us here, and also, uh, obviously, in Libya. Yeah, as the rebels move westward, we are seeing another surge going westward, w- putting pressure on Gaddafi's loyalty, loyal troops. Uh, and, uh, the, you know, it's getting close into Tripoli. We're seeing the NATO bombing campaigns coming in very hard uh, on, on Tripoli itself, um, and it looks like, uh, you know, really Gaddafi's forces are getting strangled into a very tight situation there. Mm. Time will tell. We know it's a, a regime that's obviously embedded and well prepared for this kind of thing, um, but it does look like it's uh, getting uh, much more intense for Gaddafi there. But Syria, we cannot forget Syria at the moment, Glenn. It's uh, really, really uh, an intensifying there in a bad way. Yeah, it's, it has been simmering for a while, um, but pictures have been quite slow to get out of Syria and, and many of the pictures um, often can't be uh, verified because they're not from official journalistic sources. Yes, that's absolutely true. Um, what we're getting, though, is contextual kind of uh, information coming out. And in recent days, over the weekend, we have seen many um, hundreds crossing the uh, Syrian border into Lebanon, uh, fleeing basically from the state security forces. We've got a bit of a clip there too for those who are watching this may be able to see. Um, so what, what we're seeing in this uh, this video is uh, a barbed wire kind of border. Um, you've got the Israeli Defence Force um, on one side. It's uh, being very sensitive because this is um, Nakba Day, uh, which is uh, every year um, Palestinians who are, who are basically um, prevented from returning to their homelands um, that are living in Lebanon, Syria and uh, Jordan. They um, protest on that border each year. So there's a double protest going on here. There's Syrians as well who are protesting against the author- authoritarian regime inside their own country. But what, what we're seeing, Glenn, is um, you know people basically getting squeezed um, as the security forces hunt down the pro- protesters, those who have been... Uh, involved in the uprising, um, get they've been pushing them closer and closer to the border. Um, in some cases, um, the border has has gone down, uh, and like I mentioned before, you know, hundreds have gone across. Only last night, uh, for example, um, shelling was still continuing on um, in the region of um, Tel Takahalal, uh, and that, that shooting of residents was continuing on um, as as many went across as the Syrian residents fled into Lebanon. Last night, un, um, the official count says that eight to ten residents were killed um, in, in that fire as they crossed. Um, another five or so were wounded. But uh, unofficially, um, what we're seeing from, you know, even the video that is is uh, perhaps not from journalists' cameras, is, is that many, many people have been uh, carried away, um, well and truly injured from, from these uh, gunshots. So the death toll could be quite much higher then? Well, they're saying inside the country, the death toll could be in the, you know, well up in the high hundreds, if not into the thousands inside Syria. Um, and the whole situation is getting, you know, obviously worse by the day. Mm. Um, is this um, is this situation starting to concern other countries around um, Syria, Lebanon? Yeah, um, you know it already has. Um, the crossing, for example, into Lebanon, as one can imagine, Lebanon's very, very uh, edgy about this whole situation. You know, for many of us, we can remember the 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s, even when Lebanon was caught up in a regional war, a regional conflict. Um, sectarian violence on Le- in Lebanon was, was, you know, like what we're seeing in other parts of the Middle East now. Um, Lebanon's been relatively stable considering um, its its recent past and in the last few years. So any kind of disruption on the Syrian border has the Lib- Lebanese uh, forces, um, you know, in, in that real red alert kind of stage. And we've seen a build-up of Lebanese forces on the Syrian border, but also on the border with Israel. Israel's the other player, of course, that, uh, 
you know, when, when there's unrest on its borders, it gets very edgy. And we saw, um, uh, uh, and there's another clip there, uh, Glenn ready to roll, um, where what we saw around the Golan Heights area uh, is when the Nakba protests came down near the fence, um, that there's many, many hundreds of Syrian, pro- or the Palestinians, but on the Syrian side, um, basically picking up rocks. And perhaps in some ways, Glenn might be taking advantage of the fact that you know, Israeli forces on one side of the border, if they're standing in between the Israeli forces and the Syrian forces, I guess they felt that they were not going to get shot at by the Syrians. Right. So they picked up rocks and they started belting the, uh, the Syrian troops with these rocks and all sorts of things. Um, but what happened was is, um, when the fence broke down or when a gate was broken down and um, the, these uh, Palestinians on the Syrian side came through the gate, um, and into the uh, no man's land on the uh, Israel Lebanese, uh, sorry, Golan Heights border, then you know the Israelis opened fire on them too, and uh, there, there was a confirmed number of five dead as um, we went to air this morning, Glenn. This is where it just starts to get really co- um, complicated because you've got the Syrians escaping the violence and the state violence in Syria, mm. and then you've got the Syrians protesting about the occupation of the Golan Heights. So it's Really complicated, Salwan. Yeah, it is. I mean, in simple things, we've got two things happening at once. You know, we've we've got um, Syrians who are uh, uh, protesting against, you know, being screwed down by their government for a long, long, long time. Um, The other thing that's going on at the same time is we've got Palestinians since, you know, the 1948 Palestinian war and the exodus or the flood, the diaspora that occurred during that time. Uh, Palestinians that have been forced out of their own territories, living in these border regions, um, protesting once a year. So this has come together all at once. There's even more complexity if you look underneath this, because the Syrian authoritarian regime, has been one of the few that has actually stood up for the Palestinians inside, you know, the Palestinian territory. So, you know, it's a total mix. It gets, I think, like, you know, wouldn't suggest to have the, anywhere near the knowledge of what Robert Fisk has written about, but his, his kind of layers of, of complexity that you go down and down and down really does show an accurate picture. Yeah. Okay, um, let's go back to um, the uh, situation with the Syrian refugees. Um, mm. Uh, you know, they're including women and children, the aged. What is being done to help them? Do we know? Uh, well, the ones that have made it onto the Lebanese side of the border, um, they are getting, uh, you know, first aid. They're getting medical treatment um, and being, you know, uh, assessed as to what kind of needs they uh, they need. So there is humanitarian assistance once they get across, but like we know, only 500 have made it across that border into Lebanon. Um, We also know too that um, those that have remained and couldn't get across the border through whatever means, and some people who see this clip, they'll be able to see some refugees from Syria getting across um, through rivers and lakes and streams, crossing um, old mountain passes around that Golan Heights area, but not just north of that into into Lebanon. Um, you also kind of got the, the the situation too geopolitically. If we look to put the the refugee humanitarian sus, uh, 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 issue aside, um, we, we are seeing Syria, uh, sorry, Lebanon and Israel both going to. Uh, the United Nations and complaining about each country's handling of a separate affair. So the, the intensity of unrest around that area is, is really notching up and notching up at a time where, you know, the whole region, like we lead into on this item, is, uh, has been um, un- under a lot of stress and, and pain. Indeed. Well, thanks very much, Selwyn, for um, deconstructing some of that for us. Um, you can view this, of course, as a video once more. You'll be able to find it up at scoop.co.nz. Um, in the next hour or so. And uh, we'll talk to you next week, Selwyn. Thanks very much. Okay, Glenn. Take care.